The mind and body are amazing creations of God. And for as much as modern medicine knows about these two, there is as much that they do not know. How do they function? Can they go out of balance? And if they do, how can that balance be restored? And much more. Today, in Ramadan Reflections, we review the topic of stress and depression, taking mental health issues seriously. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back to Ramadan Reflections for 2021. You know, the topic for today is obviously of a very sensitive nature for many reasons. Many people recognize the fact that around the world today, as statistics have shown, over 500 million people are suffering from some form of mental health issues. And you know, mental health issues, just as physical health issues, do not discriminate between color, gender, or even religion. So just as much as somebody who is Caucasian can have mental health issues, somebody from India or Pakistan, or Iran, or uh, Syria, or London, or South Africa can also have mental health issues. As much as men, women can also have these same mental health issues, and even religion, it does not mean that because you believe in God, because you're a devout Muslim, or a Muslim even in general, that you will not have mental health issues. Just as a Muslim is not uh, you know, impervious to having, let's say, diabetes, or cancer, or heart disease. Mental health issues transcend religion as well. And I'm sure we all know people who are suffering, have suffered from mental health issues. Maybe even we may know somebody who's taken their life, unfortunately, because they were not able to be diagnosed and receive the assistance and support that they truly needed. Now, obviously, I... Let me mention this right at the outset as a disclaimer that I am no means an expert in this topic. And this is not medical advice. Obviously, each and every one of us, we need to approach the right authorities, the right pers uh, pr professionals in the field, in any field that we want to go into. Our goal in this Ramadan Reflection Series, and especially for today's topic, is to look at one of the challenges facing humanity today and try and gleam some understanding from the teachings of Islam, from the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet and his family. May God's peace and blessings be upon all of them on what we do when we face such challenges within our life. So, you know, let me provide you some details of the experts. They say that there are two different terms that we should be aware of. And again, this will not be a class in medicine, but they say there is something called mental health and then mental illness. Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, the experts tell us that mental illnesses are described as disturbances in thoughts, feelings, and perceptions that are severe enough to affect day-to-day -day functioning of the individual. Some examples we were told are anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, mood disorders, you know, such as uh, major depressive disorders and bipolar disorder, and, and many others that the experts have spoken about. Mental health, however, they say, is a state of well-being, which we all have. Just like each of us has a state of physical health, and maybe sometimes we get the cold or a cough or the sniffles, but we still have physical health, generally speaking, we also, each of us has our own mental health that we need to look after and take care of. And as the experts say, it's not just about surviving. No, it's about thriving, enjoying life as God wants us to, and fulfilling our obligations, having a sense of purpose, being able to manage our highs and lows in life, rather than allowing it to, you know, completely take us over, unfortunately. Now, obviously, as we said, that we're not offering medical advice, but we just want to speak about this in a few moments before we go to the Quran and some guidance from the ayat of the Quran that God has given to us. 
is that we recognize the fact that there are effective strategies for preventing mental disorders. Just as if somebody has health issues, you will go to the health practitioners to find what are effective strategies to control blood pressure, to control uh, your blood sugar level, for example, if you're a diabetes patient. There are effective treatments for mental disorders and ways to alleviate the suffering caused by them. And one of the biggest things is that we have to recognize the fact, alongside two, I'll just mention the first one and then move on, is access to healthcare and social services need to be present in our societies. And our community members, I'm talking about the Muslim community, need to be able to access those, so, those services to provide that treatment that they need. And also as a community to recognize that social support is also a key. Not to ostracize people from our community if they are having, um, going through mental illness issues. We do not ostracize them or look down upon them. You know, unfortunately, there has been a time where even speakers who lecture on the pulpit will critique people and say, oh, you're stressed, you have anxiety, you have this and that, health issues, mental health illness issues. It's because you don't believe in God, you don't pray enough, you don't fast enough, you don't read enough dua, you don't read enough Quran, it's your fault. And unfortunately, placing the blame on the individual like that does not solve the situation. And so, as a community, we need to socially support one another, especially when we're going through these um, this challenge in this era. But in addition to all that I have said from the medical perspective, we also need to recognize, brothers and sisters, that alongside the help from these experts, and we have to respect whatever level of scholarship they have reached at, we also need to recognize the fact we need expect experts in the human soul. Ilmun nafs. We need religious scholars, not necessarily your local Molana or Sheikh, but we need trained scholars on the soul to maybe work in tandem with the medical health experts. But both have to be involved in this discussion. It cannot be that Islam does not have a response to these issues because the Quran tells us the soul is a creation from God and the God tells us about the ruh that we as humanity only have a little bit of knowledge about it, about its uniqueness, about its qualities, its characteristics, what can bring it out of balance? What can bring it back into the equilibrium? And so as much as we rely on physical doctors and our hospitals, we need to recognize the fact that we need to rely on the spiritual doctors as well. Because we are human beings of a mind, a soul, a body. We're not just physical creations. We have a immaterial aspect to us. And if that is not put into the equation, then perhaps these mental health issues will continue to perpetuate. You know, in the Quran, in chapter number 13, in Surah Al-Ra'ad, verse 28, which unfortunately many people misquote and misunderstand, Allah says the very beautiful following statement. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem. Alladheena amanu wa tatma'innu kulubuhum bi dhikrillah. Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al-kulub. Those who have believed and become established in belief, and whose hearts find rest and contentment and remembrance of and wholehearted devotion to God. Be aware that it is in the remembrance and of, and of wholehearted devotion to God that hearts find rest and contentment. The Quran shows us that it is in the dhikr of Allah that the hearts find ease and contentment. But don't think that the magic pill will be to take the prayer beads and just to count the name of God a million times or a billion times or to send salawat on the Prophet and his family a thousand times and that will cure your spiritual heart just as much as that will not cure your physical heart. You need to go to the experts. God has put the cure for the ailments in the experts that he has given the knowledge and ability to cure these human conditions. So do not think that you can just read a verse and even then misunderstand a verse of the Quran and get to your cure. That doesn't mean the cure, Quran is not a cure. The Quran is an antidote, is a cure for many of our challenges. 
But at the same time, God has told us, the Prophet has told us, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon him, have told us that still you need to go to the experts in health to conquer any of the challenges you face. As again, this is a vast topic. We cannot do justice to it in the time that we have allotted. I will conclude today with three points of reflection and encourage all of us to think deeply about this and to ensure that dialogue and communication is maintained and open within our families and our community and the rest of our society. Point number one, merely reciting the verses of the Quran we began with, in which Allah says that it is in the remembrance of God that hearts find the rest, is not the secret antidote to mental health issues, just as this verse cannot cure people with cardiovascular issues. Number two, that just as the mind and soul are complex and are creations of God which he himself has told us that we have very little knowledge of how they function, we need to consult experts on how to deal with mental health issues, medical health experts, and spiritual health experts. Point number three, stress, anxiety, and depression can affect people at various levels. As believers, we need to have a complete, close relationship with God at all times, built not on rituals, but a deep spiritual connection with Him. God willing, tomorrow we will continue in Ramadan Reflections for 2021 with a new challenge and a Quranic solution. Until then, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.